live stream. Uh, today we are making homemade pretzels. Somebody had asked for a couple game day recipes. Now, if you have been following me for a while, you know that I have done uh, game day recipes before. So uh, last year there are some game day, last year we made buffalo chicken in the Instapot and then we made seven different recipes with it. So if you search through my videos, you can find that. We made uh, buffalo chicken pizza and taquitos and quesadillas and French bread and we made so many things, uh, grilled cheese and braid maybe. Anyway, we made a ton of buffalo chicken recipes. Two years ago on my live stream, we did uh, eight different game day dips. So a jalapeno dip, two different queso dips, uh, meatballs, um, apple dip, fruit dip, vegetable dip, anyway, a bunch of different dips. So I have game day recipes already. So when I was searching through my website and recipes that I make, thinking what should I make today, getting ready for the big game, I thought um, pretzels. We were just at my sister's house a couple months ago and she made pretzel bites for us. And I was like, you know what? I have not made pretzels in a long time. In fact, they were so good that I asked her for the recipe that she used and I found it on the website that she recommended and it was really similar to mine. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna go back to mine because I know it, I love it, I trust it. And so that is what I'm making today. Now I'm gonna show you how to make it two different ways. Uh, we're going to make classic uh, pretzels with the salt and all that good stuff. Uh, and then we're also going to make my favorite, which of course is the sweet side of things. And we're gonna make cinnamon sugar pretzels as well, along with some cream cheese dip. So. If you are here and you are watching, go ahead and leave me a comment so that I know everything is working okay. Uh, let me know if the video and the audio is both working. Uh, welcome, Joseph, Joyce, Broke Baker. Hi, I'm so glad you guys are excited for this. So, not to be all soapboxy about it, but we have made bread before and I have talked a lot about bread. So a lot of this might be repeats, but the first thing that we're gonna do is heat the liquid that we're using. Now this is milk straight out of the fridge, so I'm going to heat it. You wanna hit about 112 degrees. Oh, look at how messy my microwave is. It's time to clean it. So I'm going to start, since it's cold milk, I'm going to start at um, 40 seconds in the microwave and then we'll stir it and we'll test the temperature. Now in our mixing bowl, we're going to um, add the yeast. This is a packet of yeast or two and a quarter teaspoons. And we're going to add just a little bit of the sugar. We'll add the rest of the sugar later. The sugar just kind of helps the yeast bloom. So we're just gonna add a little bit there. And thermometer. Now, the other thing is I have uh, already preheated my oven. I already have some dough done so that we can move on as soon as we're done with the dough. Um, and then I've started boiling some water because uh, what we're going to do after we make the dough and then the dough rises and we get the dough that I already have finished uh, and we shape the pretzels, uh, we want to boil them for just a little bit, 30 seconds. And people ask me all the time what the point of that is because I do that with my bagels and I do that with my pretzels. And what it does is it actually changes what the crust ends up being like on the outside. So you can totally make it without. All right, we're gonna test this. Let's see. We are at um, 930 degrees. So I'm going to go for just another 10 seconds in the microwave. And that should do it. <clears throat> so I apologize right now at the beginning of the video. My kids have brought me home yet another illness. I think I've been sick like four different times since uh, December. This time it is just a really scratchy throat. So um, I have some water to drink, I have some lozenges, and I might just be, there we go, 110 degrees. So I might just be a little coffee. But luckily you guys don't have to eat any of the food I'm making. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna add this warm water straight to our yeast mixture, and we're gonna let that sit. Now typically I let yeast bloom fresh yeast bloom for about 10 minutes, but a minimum of five. And since we're live, we'll probably only go for two minutes. So I'm just gonna talk for a little bit, answer a couple questions, and we're gonna move straight on. Uh, Rhonda, the sound is good over here. Great, I'm, thank you so much. You're so excited, you were just looking, uh, you were gonna go look up how to make these, yay. Susie, Carrie Ann, hi, welcome. All right, so uh, it's working on YouTube as well. 
Fantastic. No, this is not fast-acting yeast. That's a great question. This is uh, normal yeast. Fast-acting yeast, you don't have to bloom. You can just add it with everything else, and as soon as the liquid hits it, it's going to start working. I'm not a huge fan of fast-acting yeast. Uh, it's a pretty rare occasion when I use it. I, uh, I, it has a more yeasty flavor, and the dough develops slightly differently. So I, there are recipes that I have that it is like, a fast pizza bread. Uh, I've, in fact, I did a video of it a couple months ago on my channel where I did um, under uh, under an hour bread of all different kinds, cinnamon rolls, pizza, uh, braids, stuff like that. And there, there's definitely a time and a place for it. But for the final outcome of the dough and the taste, I prefer um, normal yeast. So that's a great question. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so what I have ready to go next, once our 10 minutes are up, uh, is I have some oil. Now you can also use melted butter. Both of these will work just fine for the pretzel dough. And then I have the rest of the sugar. We're gonna add that to this mixture. I was right two and a half minutes <laughs> before I hit that point that we're going to move on. Um, so you can see uh, the yeast isn't quite bloomed all the way. If it, usually by the time it gets to the end of the 10 minutes, this brown yeast mixture will cover the whole top of the liquid and you'll be able to see it because it will be kind of, mm, foam, foamy is the wrong word, but um, spongy, spongy is probably a better word. All those little itty bitty dried yeast pellets uh, bloom, which is why it's called blooming and they get fat, at, kind of like, oh, perfect example. When you leave cereal in your milk too long, <laughs> that's kind of the look that you're going for the yeast to know that it's active and working. Now, if after five, 10 minutes, your yeast hasn't changed, uh, there could be a couple different things wrong with it. Either one, your yeast is too old. I keep my yeast in the freezer and it lasts for quite a long time there. Even after I open it, I leave it in the freezer. But I also go through probably one of those big Costco packages of yeast. And I go through like three a year, uh, maybe four. <laughs> and um, uh, so your yeast could be old. That is one option. Or your liquid was too cool or too hot to cool of a liquid and it will take a lot longer for the yeast to start working. So if you see some progress, but not a lot, it could be simply that your liquid was too cool, which is why you're going for about 110, 112 degrees. If your liquid is too hot, more like 115 or over, it can actually kill the yeast. So that's why it's good to have a great thermometer. Um, I like Thermopen, um, something that's really, really accurate and uh, and just make sure you check your liquid uh, all right it's been all right i wasted a good four minutes so we're gonna move on um as you can see there's a little bit more coverage to this yeast now you can see it's starting to spread see how much more coverage it's giving than now usually by the time i hit the point that i'm ready to add everything this whole thing is completely covered so we're going to add the rest of the sugar and we're going to add our oil like I said, butter works just fine as well. Give little Sir Donna hello. And now we're gonna add half of the flour to our mixture. Give that a little mix. Once there's no more like dry flour, you can turn um, you can turn your mixer up so that it can become a little bit smoother. Now this is really important for all all bread recipes, no matter what the recipe actually says. Sometimes authors are wrong. Uh, you do not want to add all of the flour at once. I always start any bread recipe with half of the flour that the recipe calls for. Um, and mix it until it's kind of like this, a little bit gluey. And then you slowly start adding the rest of the flour because depending on where you live, your altitude, the barometer that day, the weather that day, you will need different amounts of flour to get the right texture. And it's all about getting the right texture when it comes to breads. Um, just adding all of the flour into a recipe could end up with way too much flour and a really dry, uh, dense bread that doesn't have the right sponginess that you're looking for. So. Now that we are at this stage, we're going to start adding the rest of the flour about half a cup at a time. Start on low. 
so that you don't get poof, a flower cloud. And then turn it up. Bring it back down to low. Add some more flour. Now as you can see, the dough is starting to become more cohesive and it's starting to kind of clean itself off the bowl. And that is what we're looking for. So we're gonna leave this to knead for just a second. It's still not cleaning the bowl completely, so we're gonna add more flour. And as you can see now, it's starting to clean the bowl a lot more and the dough is really starting to come together. But if I touch it, it's just still really wet and really sticky. And the dough is still kind of chunky. We want to keep kneading it to smooth it out. And you can see, oh, I almost cut my finger. <laughs> you can see how much cleaning that's already doing. So I'm not going to add any more flour yet. I'm going to give this another minute or so. And you can see now I'm glad I didn't add any more flour because it's definitely cleaning the sides completely as well as the center post. So if I test it now, it's still, it's still fairly sticky right? Uh, but it does start to clean itself off. The other, the other test for if the dough is ready, ball it up, grab a, a sample and pull it apart. If it rips really quickly like this, it's not quite ready yet, which I could tell by the stickiness already. I just wanted to show you. I just realized I forgot the salt because <laughs> I didn't have it in a cute little container. All right, add the salt. Now, normally I would just leave this to knead for a couple minutes and then just come back and test it after a while. You can see that the dough is a lot smoother than it was before, which is great. It's, I still want it to be a little bit smoother. I would probably typically need this for another like three minutes or so. So we're gonna give it another minute just to see how it goes. Now somebody asked what kind of mixer this is. This is a Bosch Universal Mixer. This is what I grew, grew up with. My parents had it, my grandma had it, my mother-in-law had it. Um, it's amazing. It's a rock star. It kneads bread really well and much faster than other mixers need. So I highly recommend it. Uh, no matter what mixer you're using, definitely use a dough hook. All right, so this is still a little underdone for me, but as you look how what a great stretch we got before it started to rip and the dough is getting nice and thin before it rips. So again, another three minutes and this would be done, but um, we're gonna move on. So next thing that I would do is uh, I would put it in a greased bowl uh, with, oh good, our water's boiling. Uh, put it in a greased bowl with a towel over the top. I'm just gonna set it aside for now. 
Now, uh, I get asked a lot with my bread recipes um, if you can do it by hand. Um, and the answer is yes, you can mix it by hand. Uh, to do it by hand, I would recommend using a hand mixer with the dough hook attachments, the swirly cue attachments, um, through the stage that you add half of the flour and mix it to that paste. And then I would add the half cup of flour and use that mixer as long as I could. As soon as that hand mixer starts to struggle though, um, that's when I would uh, take, start uh, uh, kneading it on my counter. Make sure your counter is really clean and only add a little bit of flour at a time because again, it's going to be really sticky at the beginning. And if you add enough flour at the beginning of the kneading stages that it's not sticky, you've already added too much flour. So don't be scared that it is dirty. Just uh, <laughs> just keep, like, like it's going to be sticky. I mean, dirty is the wrong word, but it's going to be sticky and make a mess. Uh, get yourself a good uh, scraper that you can scrape the counter and bring your dough back to yourself with and just keep kneading and just be more cautious when adding flour when doing it that way. Because again, as you saw, I didn't need to keep adding flour. I just needed to keep kneading once it got to that right level. So, all right the mixer side and we're going to bring out uh, the dough that I already have finished. Hold on, I'm going to check my list to make sure. Okay, good. Too often I'll start these videos and then, um, and then I'll skip a step because I write my notes down but once I write it down it helps me think better and then I just kind of keep going. Anyway, all right, this is what it looks like, all risen. Uh, now, again, when you're right, letting a dough rise, the most important part is letting it double in size. Now, most recipes will say let it double in size for an hour or let it double in size for an hour and a half, but the time is not important. What is important is the doubling in size aspect. So whether it takes a half an hour or three hours, because uh, that all depends on the temperature of your house and again, altitude, uh, the most important thing is to let it double in size. One of my tricks is that I take a picture with my phone that I can compare it to so I can tell if it's doubled in size or not. All right, so knock down the dough, pull it out. Sprinkle a little flour on your counter, but not too much. Now, depending on if we want to make uh, pretzel shapes or pretzel rods or um, uh, pretzel bites, <laughs> will depend on what you want to divide this up into. This recipe makes about six pretzels. So I'm gonna divide it in half and then I divide those halves into thirds and we're going to use these as our base shapes. So I'm going to roll out a long rope. All right. All right. And for your pretzel shape, I think I want my rope longer. All right, so that's, uh, I don't know, about 20 inches. All right. And then you want to pinch that down and set that aside on some parchment paper. Because we don't want it sticking to anything. All right. Side. <coughs> if you want pretzel bites, you want to do the same thing. Roll out a long rope, but instead of shaping it, you're going to cut little bites. Now, if you want pretzel sticks, there's a couple different things you can do. One is to uh, roll it out just like we did before and just cut it into 
like three, three or four pieces instead of shaping it. But another way that you can go that I like to do to give a little bit more depth and shape to mine is actually to pat it out or roll it out. And twist it and that just gives a little bit more depth to the pretzels so those are options for shaping all right I'm gonna do these last two pizzas in a normal classic pretzel shape again So again, roll it out about 20, 22 inches long. Be careful not to get too thin on the very ends. make it the bigger your pretzel shape will be but you want to be careful also to not go so thin that your pretzel ends up being not as fluffy and soft as you'd like right, All right. time for uh, the next step which is uh, to quickly do some boiling so let's bring over this And I already have some water boiling, so we're going to bring that over. Okay, and you don't just want it to be boiling water. We're going to add some baking soda to it. And now, whew, hold on, fan. I can't find my fan! All right, I'm going to move this so it's a little bit more out of my camera's way. I don't want steam to ruin my camera. to add some baking soda to the water and that's going to ooh, oh no! cause a reaction maybe don't fill up your water so much oh that is hot <laughs> oh I'm really talented what can I say okay we're going to throw in each of the pretzels for about 30 seconds. Until, sorry, I'm cutting my head. And what this affects is actually the um, uh, the outer shell. So I will put some. I will put one on the baking. I put one on the baking pan without boiling it, so you can see the difference. All right, I'm trying to do some of each. I'll do a couple of these without putting them in the water as well. Okay, let's do a couple sticks. can see the difference. Whew. Okay, now my twisted ones might come a little untwisted. I can just retwist them up again. And 
Again, just 30 seconds is good enough, so don't leave them in there for a long time. Okay, sorry, I'm retwisting on my baking sheet. <laughs> that's nice and pinched. There we go. Okay, so I have an example of each uh, of each tile. Um, whew, there we go. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. I have an example of each style. Um, uh, boiled and not boiled. Oh my word, come on, stupid camera. There we go. <laughs> I have an example of each one, boiled and not boiled. I, this tray is the boiled ones, and my other tray is the not boiled ones. So I'm just going to make sure that these are spread out. All right, and then the final thing the final thing that we want to do is do the egg wash. So I'm going to move all this out of my way so we can work on that. Now, if you have a lot of people coming over, I would recommend doing a double batch. Because like I said, these make six normal pretzels. Uh, although if you're making pretzel bites, it would make like 60 pretzel bites. So I might recommend going that route. Okay. Sorry, I spilled water everywhere. Let me clean this up real fast. <laughs> okay. So for the egg wash, we're going to... Oh, my word, my cameras are not wanting to work today. Come on. There we go. I figured out what was wrong. All right, so take an egg. Tablespoon of water. And you want to mix that together really good. So, kind of like we did with the boiled and not boiled versions, I want to show a couple of these egg washed and a couple not egg washed so you can see the difference. So, well, egg wash. All right, so I'll leave these on egg washed, this one egg washed, and those on. And and again, the egg wash is also going to affect the crust, just like the boiling does. So, outside. And then finally, we want to add some um, coarse salt. Now, if the ones that we're going to be making cinnamon and sugar, we don't want to add the coarse salt to, because we want those to stay sweet. So, again, <laughs> we're kind of just dividing and conquering all these trays. I'm going to take this uh, coarse sea salt and add it to the one that I egg washed, and same thing. That will also help us know which ones are egg washed and which ones aren't. Now, adding the salt is something that your kids can do unless you feel like they have a heavy hand, and then maybe you don't want them to do it. So, all right, I'm also going to uh, salt our non-boiled ones so we can see how that affects them. Oh, I forgot to egg wash them. I want to egg wash the non-boiled ones for sure because they're very dry and the salt won't stick to them without the egg wash. All right, so that we can see the difference on these as well, I'm going to egg wash half. I should have made a double batch so we could see the difference in all of these. All right, now we're going to put these in the oven and bake them. All right, 
for about 15 minutes. And while we are making those, uh, we're going to make the fillings. So, let me put down the counters again. Because I have made a mess. And, okay, we're going to make the cheese sauce for the classic pretzels first. And then we'll make the cream cheese. Okay. Uh, Elena, you bought your Bosch and then you found me. Oh, I'm so glad that you did. Um, you love my hair? Thank you so much. Uh, that's awesome. Nice. Uh, uh, Jill, you made bagel bread and you had to boil it. Yes, I boil my bagels as well. Um, okay. And yes, of course, you can come over and get pretzels as soon as I'm done. Okay, now pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Um, since the water boiled over, my mixer, or my um, <laughs> cooktop is looking a little, <laughs> a little rough. We'll just ignore that. What can I say? It takes talent. So this is going to be the smallest batch of cheese sauce ever. We're going to start with just a tablespoon of butter. Now, usually I make this about four times as big as this. Uh, so, but I knew that I wouldn't have a lot of pretzels and my kids aren't here today and I didn't want to have too much cheese sauce around the house. Just because, you know, I'm trying to not gain 30 pounds. <laughs> All right, we're going to let that melt. Oh. Um. And let me see if I can uh, catch up to any questions that there might be. What kind of mixer, Bosch? Already got that one. Carol, it sounds good here. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that the sound is working. Thanks for letting me know. Um, we seem to have a lot less interaction today than we normally do. It's it, like a weird week with a lot of stuff going on. I don't know about. Um, you bet that's what happened to the kiffles you were making for Christmas, you killed the yeast, they were flat as pancakes. Yes, probably either the yeast was dead or the yeast got killed. Yeast is, it's not super sensitive, like it's not, I wouldn't ever say, oh, yeast is so scary and it's so hard to work with, because it's not, it's just about knowing a couple little tips, like don't overheat the liquid. Um, oh my gosh, the mixtures cost as much as a KitchenAid, uh, but they're like way better than a KitchenAid. Uh, my original Bosch, my mom's original Bosch is, let's see, I'm 41. So hers is 42 years old and still works great. My mother-in-law's Bosch is 48 year olds and still works great. Um, they have 800 watt machines. I have a whole review on my blog where I compare the two machines. Um, I had to use a KitchenAid when I was on Food Network and I swore at it constantly. It's so weak, it takes so much longer to mix stuff, I couldn't stand it. So personal preference, yes it costs as much, but it's worth way more. All right, butter's melted. Now the flour, make our roux. This is how I make all of my cheese sauces uh, and also my white sauce for thickening soups. And once the flour has been kind of cooked so you don't get a floury tasty, go ahead and add the milk. And then you want to bring this to a boil. Try not to spill even more than you already have. Clearly being a little bit sick is also making me a little frazzled. I need to slow down. Um, cute, super cute shape options. Thank you so much, Jenna. Uh, Kelly, you hate your KitchenAid. Yes, I, I, I mean, I have never owned one. I've just used others, and it drives me batty. I love that the Bosch has a lid and has a cover. It has the open top, and it can add things to it. Uh, yeah, I could go on and on and on with my love for Bosch. Um, totally worth it. They always have sales. Uh, Bosch always has sales around Mother's Day and around the holidays. Um, and I owe Bosch an email, but they are going to give me a code for you guys to get, like, a discount on the Baker's Bundle that I recommend, so sorry I will work on getting that to you guys ASAP. It's totally on me. They, they send me emails. Carrie sends me emails. Um, I'm sure they're worth it, but you have a KitchenAid. But you, oh yeah, if you're needing things, you definitely want a Bosch for sure. Your KitchenAid had a horrible squeal. Oh, 
you got the Bosch and you gave away the KitchenAid. <laughs> you didn't feel right asking money for it. You guys, the conversation over on YouTube about people's love of Bosch is killing me. I love it. All right, so we now have um, a nice thick white sauce. As soon as it comes to a boil, I turn the heat off. And now we're going to add our cheese. Um, you can use any cheese that you like. I'm a fan of sharp cheddar, and you want it either freshly shredded, or I didn't want to get my shredder out, so I just cut it up really small, since it was such a small amount. Um, you can also use fake cheese. Velveeta melts beautifully, and is a little bit, probably more classic for pretzels, but since I'm the one eating it, I want to go for the better taste. So, you don't want to keep cooking this, this is why I turn the heat off before I add the cheese. If I get to the point that it's melted and it's not quite melted all the way, I'll bring it up to low. But if you cook the cheese at too high a temperature, the cheese will get all grainy and nasty and you don't want that. So I just turn the heat off and I let the residual heat from the pan and the sauce melt everything. So I'm going to set that aside, let that cheese sit and melt a little bit. And I'm gonna work on the cream cheese topping now. All right, so again, I'm gonna make a smaller batch than I normally do, since I'm not making all cinnamon and sugar pretzels. So I'm just gonna use a half a square of the cream cheese and two tablespoons of butter. Usually I do eight ounces and, um, and uh, half a quarter of a cup of butter okay you guys saddest day ever about two weeks ago my Bosch hand mixer which they don't sell in America anymore died to be fair it was on its last leg when my daughter accidentally dropped it off the counter and then it never came back to life again and I'm so sad and so I ran to the store because in the middle of a recipe so I ran to the store and I bought one that said it was nice, strong, high wattage and had good reviews on Consumer Reports. And can I just say how much I don't love it and how much I miss my Bosch. Because like these are way too short. The Bosch one had really nice long ones. And so I, I just don't love it. And even though it says it's like super, super strong, it kind of makes a funny noise and it can't quite handle all the stuff that I do to it. So I'm a little... I'm in mourning still over my Bosch hand mixer. It's so sad. All right. Well, let's bring this camera back on here. So I'm just gonna beat this up. These are at room temp. some vanilla and yes I just eyeball my vanilla <laughs> this is basically just um, cream cheese frosting as much powdered sugar as I normally would. Um, all right, I think that needs a little milk. Can you hand me the milk, baby? Yeah, from the fridge. Thank you, sweetheart. All right, I'm giving my cheese mixture a stir. Those clumps are almost done. All right, let's eyeball some milk. That looks good. So it's more liquidy than I would use for frosting. But because I want this to be for dipping, I'm just going to leave it like that. If, if anybody out there has an old Bosch hand mixer from when they used to sell in the United States, 
and they're not using it, uh, DM me and I will send you my address and I will pay you for it because it is so good and I miss it so much. All right. All right, cheese sauce is almost completely melted, so next we are going to mix up the cinnamon and sugar for our cinnamon sugar pretzels. Now I'm going for a wider, shallower bowl, because um, I don't need it to be really deep in cinnamon and sugar, I need it to cover more surface area, so it covers the whole entire pretzel. So, this out beforehand. Okay, so this one has a length for the longer pretzels, but it will also still fit our normal pretzel. So let's go. So cinnamon or sugar, cinnamon, and mix that together. Uh, Amy, you were giving your husband's mother's and grandmother's boss. You can't figure it out. Uh, oh, honey, it is worth figuring out. Let me know what questions you have. I will totally answer them. It is seriously amazing. And there are so many fun attachments that I love. Okay. So there we go. So we have our cinnamon and sugar. We have our cream cheese. We have our butter sauce. Oh, and the cheese is all melted, so that's looking good. So the last thing we need is the melted butter to roll our pretzels in so we can so that the cinnamon and sugar will stick to them. And for that, I want um, half a cup of butter melted. I'll probably just do a quarter of a cup since we're doing such a small batch. Okay, so that's my first timer just to check on everything since I actually haven't made pretzels in this oven before. Whoa! <laughs> something spilled in my oven last week and it's causing us oh and we are done I'm glad that I set the timer so that only took 12 minutes Ooh. done 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 all right let me clean off the counter and I will show you our pretzels Hold on, I'm just going to put the butter in the microwave to melt really fast. Okay. A little quick clean up. don't even want to know what my kitchen looks like after one of these videos. <laughs> it's always fun because I clean the kitchen before the video and then after the video. And yeah. Okay, let's do our top-down camera. quite a big difference. So over here, this is the tray. Let's widen our stance a little bit. This is the tray that we didn't boil, and you can immediately see the difference. These are not pretzels in the way that we think of pretzels, where these have that great pretzely look. And even though, so right here, this is the half that I, um, right here, this is the half that I did an egg wash on. And while there's a slight difference, you can see that without the boiling, it's just not the same thing. So this right here, egg washed, not egg washed. These are both egg washed, not egg washed. So this not boiled and not egg washed. Let's see, hold on, bring my focal point back to the center. All right, so this one is not boiled and not egg washed and the texture is just wrong. So this 
is um, egg wash, but not boiled. We're over here. This one is boiled. Come on, focus. Come on, little guy. There we go. This one is boiled, but not egg washed, where this one is both boiled and egg wash. You can see why this is definitely the route that you want to go. It's totally different. Um, Diana, yes, they do have Bosch hand mixers in the UK, but it doesn't work with the power voltage in America. All right, so now these salted ones are ready to serve. Let's rip one apart so you can see the texture. All right, beautiful. Maybe bring our lighting down a little bit. There we go. All right, so good looking. Oh. All right, so I'm going to take, Hoo -hoo. this is so good, ha, 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 oh, hot, so hot, whoo, mm. so hot, so good. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> that is so good. All right, so the cinnamon and sugar pretzels. Let's move the pretzels out of the way. And let's dip them in some melted butter. All right. Ooh, there's still like a haze of fog in here. Stupid thing is, I just cleaned my oven, and it's already a mess again. All right, so I have my melted butter, I have my cinnamon and sugar. <laughs> Probably should have gotten a bigger butter dish. Here we go. Some sugar pretzel. This will be easier. This little smaller one. That's so good. Yeah, I think you just need like a vat of melted butter for this. There we go. Oh, ho, 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 ho. look how good that looks. And then let's get a bunch of these little bites. can see how easy it is and you can take the salted ones and dip them in the cinnamon and sugar too I just would say if you know you're gonna cinnamon and sugar them to not bother with the salt but that is just me all right Okay, so I have my nice cream cheese frosting-ish dip. Ooh. <laughs> Usually I wouldn't serve them the second that they come out because that is melting the frosting a little. Mm. Mm, so good. And yes, I just double dipped. Well, I'm the only one at home. Well, my 18 year old's home, but she's sick too, so she doesn't come. Mm. All right. So, um, mm. 
Now, again, because you're careful with the amount of flour that you add at the stage that you're making the dough, these aren't too tough. Uh, they're nice and soft. They've got that great crust from the boiling and the egg wash. Um, so they have that bite to the outside of them, but then you get to the center and they are just soft and delicious and oh so good. Um, some other variations, you can add um, some cheddar cheese and some garlic or some jalapenos to the top before you cook them. You could also do pepperoni before you cook them and serve them with marinara. There are so many options for making pretzels really, really fun. Now the pretzel shape itself is really fun to do. And as you can see, they do poof up when they're baking. So I do recommend going as stretched out as possible, simply because the, you know if you really wanna get that nice distinct pretzel, you can cook them for longer if you want them a little bit harder. Um, and if you do want them more tough, some people like tough pretzels, you know, to each his own. Uh, again, just add a little bit more flour in the kneading process and you will get that tougher pretzel. So that, mm, that is everything. I will stay on for a couple minutes and answer some questions. And I will see you next Tuesday at the same time, 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 uh, Pacific Tuesdays for our next live video. Mm. Thank you for the recipe. Can't wait to make it. Don't forget, if you do make it, tag me on social media, Instagram or Facebook, wherever you make it, and I will share it. Rhonda, if you live close, you would volunteer to be my assistant every Tuesday. Thank you. I used to have an in-person assistant come, but she's um, she got a new job, so now I'm all by myself. Uh, ironically, you poofed up after eating pretzels. Jill, you and me both. <laughs> and Jill, you can come over anytime now if you want to get sick. Uh, Nathan, with the... Hold on. With the boiling water, have you ever had a sour taste on the outside of the pretzels... Uh, at some of the pretzel stands, they get an intense soda or sour taste them. Any ideas? Uh, adding the baking soda to the water will change the taste a little bit. Uh, normal big pretzel stands, they actually add a different kind of base to their water. But baking soda is just what's easy to buy for the home chef. I don't feel like it gives it a sour taste at all. But that could be why you're getting a sour taste from some larger vendored pretzels. Um, if you're looking for that, I could I could look up what it is, what the chemical is that they use. Um, it's just not one that I keep on hand. Uh, she, don't, she, don't, she now has three. Yes, I uh, I have I have two Bosch Universals now, a white one and a black one, and then I also have the um, the smaller, slightly weaker, but still really good that uses all the same attachments. Um, one from uh, Nutramel, um, but I broke that one already. <laughs> I think it, we moved it around for a couple events, and I think it got dropped. Um, but yes, I love my Bosch mixers. They are amazing. Thank you for your recipe. Can't wait to try it. Um, Bosch needs to send you on for everything you're doing. <laughs> they actually did. I had an old, old, old Bosch mixer. And about 12 years ago, Bosch reached out to me after my first review, and they sent me one because they wanted me to have the newer one for pictures. And then they recently just sent me the black one to try with the metal base. Today I used the plastic one, and I, I do say I've tried the metal bowl for uh, doughs, and I prefer the plastic bowl for doughs. The metal one worked, but it didn't have that same coming clean aspect that the plastic bowl has. So I like the plastic bowl for breads. I like the metal one for frostings because the metal doesn't hold any grease at all and so anything that you want to be grease free especially things like royal icing so i like the metal bowl for frosting i like the plastic bowl for breads uh and then i use them interchangeably for anything else cookies um cake batters stuff like that i haven't had a preference either way um uh, let's see. Ooh, saving it for one for sure yes they're totally worth it um Shade options. Okay, I think I'm all caught up. If I missed your comment, I am so sorry. Uh, you don't like the sour taste. Great, Nathan. So yeah, I wouldn't worry. I I don't notice that at all. I better eat another one to see. Sugar one's probably the best option. Yes, I'm licking it. I mean, it just tastes like a pretzel to me, but I'm not getting, I'm not getting any sour tones. I would say if you do what I just did, I would maybe try one 
Maybe try boiling one just in water before you add the baking soda and see if you have a preference. Um, I like what the baking soda does to the water and to the boil, so I always personally add it. And again, I have not noticed a sour taste. So hopefully that helps. Um, how do you make cake flour? Uh, for every cup of flour, I take out one tablespoon of regular all-purpose flour and I add one, uh, one tablespoon of um, <coughs> sorry, cornstarch. So that's, um, sorry, two tablespoons, two tablespoons, minus two tablespoons and add two tablespoons. Uh, if you're doing it on a larger scale, like I always do, that's seven cups of flour to one cup of cornstarch. And then I sift it at least four times and I have the Bosch, the Bosch sifter attachment, which makes it super fast and super easy. Um, and that's how I make my own cake flour. That's a great question. Um, thank you, thank you, great. Already out the door. Okay, I think... All right, I think that's it. I think we're all caught up with questions. Uh, I apologize if I missed any. Uh, don't forget in the comments to let me know if you have anything, if there's a holiday coming up that you want to see something for or a movie coming up. Uh, I do take requests. Uh, and I forget what I'm planning on making next week. I have something scheduled. But <laughs> uh, anyway, I will see you next Tuesday. Thanks again for joining me. Uh, I love talking with all of you guys. I love that the internet makes the world so small and so much fun to connect with other people who love food as much as I do. So uh, I will see you next week. Thanks for watching.